Shirley, um, if you're listening, can you please take a full count of who's here so we know that who I'll have to get with later? I certainly can. Thank you. Okay, we're ready to go. Very good. Uh, John Marling has been in this business for what, 130? Oh, wait, it feels like 130, so yes, definitely. <laughs> Well, we very much appreciate John has been uh, a friend to the publishing industry for many, many years. I'll let him fill in that detail. But uh, this is a partnership, it sounds like, uh, that uh, came together maybe a year ago, John, between you and Metro. Yes, definitely. Uh, Metro has been a very good supplier of ours for our art, as everyone on this call knows. And... We have always stressed spec ads, and um, it's going to be, I think, quite nice for us as we go forward to put some meat where the spec ad sizzle is. It's always good. I've always said a picture is worth a thousand words, but we've got hopefully some meat to put on that bone uh, with the information that John is going to be able to give us. So uh, with that, I'll turn it over to John. How, how's that, John? Thanks, I appreciate it. Let me go back to the main screen here. You know, Steve said, I, I think fortunately, I love, I love the publishing industry. And I started out as an ad rep many years ago and, and then rose through the ranks and was a circulation director, retail ad manager, marketing, classified, production, et cetera, and spent 13 years and ultimately I was publisher of seven newspapers and then founded Pulse, my gosh, 35 years ago. And what I, and what my mission is, particularly during this excruciating period and impact of COVID, is to do everything I possibly can to assist you guys. And through you, to help your local businesses because they are hurting right now. It is extremely difficult. And as you're all well, well aware, working from home and these are unprecedented times. And I'll be blunt, even though there's a lot of pain and suffering, I think this is one of the best times you know, for the industry. And the reason for that is there's never been a time that your local businesses need your help and assistance. They don't have any information of what's gonna happen over the next week, next month. They can't go back to you know, their, their, their history and say, okay, last June and you know, this is what happened. And so, because everything's changed, everything has changed. And so the reality is, is that we're experiencing, you know, catastrophic decrease in revenues. And I'll submit to you that the primary reason for that is the economic uncertainty. When a business is faced with that economic challenge, pain, they're gonna cancel their advertising, that's human nature, because it's easier to cancel or cut back on advertising than it is to lay off people and they've got fixed costs like, like rent. And so as I just mentioned, because the business's need is so phenomenally great, they need us. And one of our, one of our publisher friends a few months ago, and this is the quote from her, Carolyn Bess is a regional publisher up in Washington. She said that a current shopping survey would really help local businesses, in her words, who are freaking out right now. And I'm sure you can, you know, attest to that in the conversations you've, ha you've had with your local businesses. But here's what she said, that would help us be viewed as the trusted advisor who is to there to help them navigate through these unprecedented times. I mean, she said it just beautifully. In other words, do a survey, get the information in terms of shopping over the next three months that your local businesses want to position yourselves during this critical time as the trusted source consultant friend for these local businesses. So Pulse conducted, uh, we launched it a couple months ago, a COVID impact shopping survey. Even though we had completed a nationwide survey in January, the end of January. And by the way, we do, a, since 2008, we do the Pulse of America. It's an ongoing annual shopping survey. And we quickly realized, and Carolyn get, kind of gave us a nudge, that we everything changed. Obviously, the impact of COVID immediately changed all shopping patterns. 
And so Pulse launched across our client network. And I'm proud to say we have over 600 publications using our, our services in all 50 states and six provinces of Canada. So across our network, you know, we, we launched the survey. We got 17 uh, press associations, you know, to join in and partner with us. And as of this morning, we got, we have, and it's an ongoing survey, by the way, you know, because things are evolving and changing. So we're constantly gathering information. The survey now has 26,000 responses, 26,000 sample across the United States. And here's the great news for you. You guys promoted the survey and you invited you know, your readers, your website visitors with email, with links on your websites, with your ROP ads in your paper. And so we have 400 completed surveys, 400 just of your audience and the immediate areas right around you in New York. Putting that into perspective, when they do a nationwide political poll, like you see many of them right now, the sample they use for the United States of America with 100 million households is between 800 and 1,200. So you have significantly more sample on a proportionate basis right there among your local area. Now the key to this was is we ask the questions your businesses would ask. A furniture store would ask. You plan to shop at a furniture store. What do you plan to buy for your home? A realtor would ask about selling or buying a home. Obviously, a lumberyard would ask about products or services that a lumberyard sells. And so when we set out to do the COVID impact shopping survey, we identified the business categories that we felt would be most important to you guys and those business categories that would have the most impact because of COVID. And so I'm really excited to share with you this afternoon, not only the results of that survey, you know, for all these businesses, but also to kick off your own sales resource. We over the years, and I'll be blunt, we've been doing research for 35 years and I got sick and tired of it sitting on the shelf and not getting used. So we have been developing step by step and enhancing it as we go along, a program called the Pulse Sales Tools. And all it is is quite simply, it's, it's a resource for each of you to be able to access this shopping information, to be able to, to, to put together a presentation, for everybody from a dentist, you know, to a, a, a restaurant, you know, to a car dealer, et cetera. Now remember that we asked, what do you plan to buy over the next three months? What's in the pipeline? Because now we're starting to see, well, the first steps towards normalization. You know, restaurants have been able to do takeout. Uh, Berta was just sharing me that some of the retail businesses, you know, have curbside, et cetera. But what the businesses want to know, what's in the pipeline for me? What can I expect? What's going to be happening? What's the crystal ball? And so now you're able to access this information. Before I go live on your site, I want to share some recommendations, you know, with you. These are some of the things that if I was an ad rep again, you know, or was in management, these are the things that I think would be most beneficial for each one of you. Number one is retention. Friends helping friends. I'm sure that many of you have businesses who are very, very good friends of yours. You've worked with them for many years. My recommendation is share with them first, right away, no excuses, this information about and for their business they will be so appreciative. And that's what friends do, is they assist and support the people they care about. And so I put together here as an example of how do you help your friends? How do you share that information? We have a little program called the teaser. And the teaser is very simple. It's the big number. What's in it for the business? So you see on this example right here, there's 5,460 households who plan to shop at a building supply lumberyard in the next, next three months. Now, if you were a, a lumberyard, obviously that would get your attention. Why? Because you don't know what's gonna be happening over the next three months. 
And so somebody calling you up on the phone and said, I've got some good news. We just participated in a lumberyard survey because we asked the same questions you would ask. You plan to shop at a lumberyard. And then you say, we've got almost five and a half thousand households. Now that grabs their attention, that uncertainty. Now you're able to share with them positive facts about the opportunity. In this case, this is one of 200 examples of business categories about the opportunity of your audience. And how do we calculate that? It's really simple. Right down here in this teaser is the simple math. From the survey, 35.8% of the people who took the survey said, yeah, we plan to shop at a lumber yard in the next three months. And by the way, lumber yard is one of the categories because people are at home that have increased in shopping compared to the survey we completed before COVID in January. So it's just taking the percentage from the survey times your audience, in this example here, 15,250, to give you the number, the opportunity, what's in it for the business. This is the good news for them. This is what friends help friends, sharing the information with them. Now here's even better news. I'm gonna show you just in a second, we go on your live Pulse site, how you in under 60 seconds can create a teaser talking point like this, so you're able to pick up the phone and share the good news. But just doing a little role play here, if I might, you know, I've got some good news. We found out there's almost five and a half thousand households who plan to shop at a lumber yard in the next three months that we reach. Would you like to know more about what they plan to buy? They say like what? Well, like lumber, like decking, you know, like fencing. And what do you think the business says? Of course, it's now a better time than ever. As I mentioned, you know, at the, the beginning of our get together because the businesses don't know. So that's the teaser. And it's the first example of using your COVID impact shopping information, but presenting it, engaging with the business in terms of a benefit, an opportunity for their business. We also asked in your COVID impact shopping survey, what information would you, your audience, like to see from local businesses? I would share this once again with your friends, retention. This is what your readers, your audience want from the local businesses. And look at this, 81% say they wanna know what services are you offering now? What new services are you offering? What hours do you have now? What online services do you offer? There's a high level of confusion. And so I would certainly, if I was an ad rep, definitely, absolutely recommend to my businesses that they communicate with a consistent program to their customers and their potential customers with a campaign with you, sharing the information, the update of their business. The third thing I wanna show you here is a little tool that's in your Pulse program. Because of the high financial uncertainty today, and I think you'll agree with me, there's, there's many, 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 many businesses who more than ever don't wanna spend any money. And so what we have for you is a little worksheet that engages the business so that the business figures out for themselves how few customers they need to pay for campaign. So remember the lumber yard example a moment ago, 5,500 households are gonna shop at a lumber yard? Let me do kind of a little walkthrough here of the break-even calculator, because what it's designed to do is take away the fear, take away the financial uncertainty, and give them a peace of mind that yes, they can continue. Remember, this is about retention can continue the campaign with you. Why? Because of the very, 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 very small number of customers they need to pay for the campaign. And so in this example, let's say it's a $12,000 campaign over 52 weeks, remember existing retention, and we get from the business, and I'll show you this live in just a moment, we get from them, what's your customer worth? You get a new customer, what's that household gonna spend? 
So in this example, $2,000. We wanna figure out with them what their cost of goods is. I mean, a furniture store's gotta pay for the furniture. Lumberyard's gotta pay for the lumber, right? They've got cost, cost of goods. So you gotta take that out to come up with the net customer value. And so as an example, 65% is cost of goods. The program does all the math, which is sweet. The customer net value is 700. It's just simple math and the program does it for you. 700 into 12,000, they only need 18 customers. Just 18 customers out of the 5,500 to continue the campaign with you. And I think you'll agree with me. Think about it for a moment. All they need is 18 out of 5,500. I've had so many businesses when I've engaged with this simple little worksheet that have said, well, that's a no brainer. Why? Because you take the conversation away from cost price, which even in good times, I know when I was an ad rep, economy is booming. And they said, well, I can't afford it. You know, times are tough. The times are tough now and more than ever, helping the business with them for them. How can I kind of present this, by the way, a little role play is, I understand how tough things are, how uncertain the economy is, but let's together figure out what's comfortable for you. In other words, how many customers do you feel comfortable with that you would need to pay for an ongoing campaign? Do you want to be consistent? Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's figure out together what the magic number is, but you're the boss. And every single time they do that, they realize how few customers they need. It makes it so much easier for them to say, yes, let's continue, okay? So let me pause here and just be more than happy to answer any questions on what you've seen so far. I don't wanna to get too far and then, you know, and be remiss and not answer your questions. So please, any questions or comments on what we've covered so far? Okay, perfect. Okay, the next recommendation, let's get back some of the lost or canceled advertising. Let's use an example furniture store. A furniture store is one of the business categories that saw a dramatic decrease in shopping in the new COVID shopping survey compared to January pre-COVID. And in the example here, it's gone down 50%. From 20% going to shop at a furniture store in the next 12 months to 9.6% shop at a furniture store in the next three months. Remember, we changed the questions to the near term so it's more usable, actionable for the businesses. But look at this. With a 10,000 distribution publication, 9.6% doesn't sound like a big percentage. It also doesn't sound like a very positive going from you know, cutting to 50%. But here's the reality. That's still 960 households for each 10,000 circulation. Is that a big deal to a furniture store who's hurting? Absolutely. It gives them some positive, motivating encouragement about what's in the pipeline. And so help the businesses realize the opportunity for them so that they will reconsider and get back on board with you. The second resource I wanna show you that's in your Pulse program is the flyer. It's kind of like a super teaser. So you see here, the headline is just perfect. To help you, business person, find solution to grow your business, Pulse asked the questions you would ask, and that's exactly what we do. We asked, right in the survey, do you plan to shop at a furniture store? So using the example from the previous page, 9.6%, it comes up once again with the teaser, the big number. What's in it for the business? That's the conversation. What do they get? And I'm gonna be <laughs> redundant again. They don't know. And so now more than ever, you guys can be the heroes. You guys can be that consultant. But look at this, the flyer goes to the next level. Because in the COVID survey, we not only asked you plan to shop at a business category, but we asked about products and services relating to that category. And so now he gives them further information. And so many times that I've been doing, you know, four-legged sales call pre-COVID or doing, making some, you know, calls over the phone for our clients, 
the businesses are so appreciative, so appreciative. But what they realize is because people are at home, they go, oh my gosh, look at this. 260 households are going to buy a recliner chair. And maybe like Berta said, they can, you know, do curbside pickup. Come in your pickup truck and put it in the back because people are spending more time at home. So they're realizing, well, now's the time to get a recliner since I'm gonna be spending an extended period of time. But the point being is here's this flyer. Once again, I'll show you in just a few moments how you can create this flyer in under 60 seconds. Obviously you can do it from home, but better yet, it's designed so that you can engage with the business in real time. And so what's in it for the business, finding a solution for the business, what to advertise. Okay, and then I would also, to get the business back, is share with them how few customers they need. Because it comes always down to that financial decision. So let's make it easy for them to say yes by showing them how few customers they need. And I'll show you how to do that live. Now, number three, this is, this is really cool because, now well, maybe that's not a good word to use because of the circumstances today. But there's 51 businesses that have shown an increase in shopping because of COVID. Obviously, those businesses relating to home landscaper, home gardening, lumber yard that I mentioned, plant nursery, those businesses have seen an increase. You know, so for a lumber yard, look at that, 39% increase in shopping because of COVID compared to pre-COVID. You know, um, yard equipment store, 77%. We've got a list for you that is a click away that will give you 51 business categories that each have many, 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 many individual businesses that are very, very good prospects because of COVID. So I'll show you that in just a second. Recommendation number four is we put together a Pulse training and certification program. And many of our clients told us that this is a great time because you guys are at home to do the training and certification. I would highly recommend it to each one of you. It's a great introduction. Come up to speed on your Pulse tools. It goes through each step of the sales process and each one of the Pulse tools, okay? And then the fifth recommendation, just top of my head here is, you guys are very, very familiar, very successful with Metro Spec Ad Program. Built into your program, I, I don't think we've turned it on yet, but we will literally in, in micro, mac, micro speed, micro speed is get it turned on for you, is using built into your Pulse program, the ad wizard from your Metro. And then the last thing I wanna cover, and I'll show you going live is working from home. How to do the teasers I showed you, the flyer, and we also put together and have a call, call planner program. It's a great little tool and resource for you to help you put together prospect lists, but more important, help you manage and keep on top of where you are with your, uh, your, your calls each week. Okay, so before we go live once again, and don't be bashful, are there any questions or anything that I can assist with? Okay, so let's go live. We'll go to pulseresearch.com. And I personally logged into your site. And so on your home page, and by the way, you can log into your Pulse program from any device, anywhere. And each of you should have your Pulse login. Your email is your username, and then you get a temporary password from Pulse that you can change. If you don't have it, it might have gone into your spam. And so let me just say right now, if you didn't get your Pulse login, please send an email to support, S-U-P-P-O-R-T, support at pulseresearch.com, okay? So let's take a quick tour. So on your home page is each one of the Pulse tools. We'll go over in just a moment. We've got some specific tools such as the top businesses, you know, who've seen an increase because of COVID. We've got 
four prospecting tools for you. Ways to engage with a business, needs analysis, presentation, how to overcome objections. Here's the closing tool right here. We'll click on that right now. But in a moment, go into it live. And then also on your homepage is your Pulse training and certification. So let me just click on that right now. And then when you log in, click on start training. And what that'll do is set up for you personally your certification steps. And then when you're going through the training, there's a little intro here, and then a little bit about the research, where the numbers come from, and then it just guides you through each step of the sales process, but each one of the Pulse tools for prospecting, the call planner, which is your prospect list, how do you engage with the teaser, getting the appointment using the flyer, you know, needs analysis, it's pretty straightforward. You'll notice that each one of the steps has about a three maximum five minute video. And then there's a training assignment for each one of the steps to give you hands-on experience. And when you come to the end, you just click on each one of the assignments and you make a sale and you are Pulse certified. And what's positive about that is, is that, and I'll just be candid, the Pulse tools have a lot of different features and a lot of different um, aspects to it. It can be overwhelming when you first use it. Going through the training and certification is a great way to become comfortable with this new resource that frankly was designed for each one of you. Okay, now, so let's say you've got an existing business, Friends Help Friends, all you have to do is just type in the name of the business. And I always use State Farm Insurance because I always know there's a State Farm Insurance anywhere you go. So you type in the name of a business, so like Lisa Catone, and you can just click on the navigation dots, and you can create a teaser, a flyer, set up an account, etc. cetera. So right at your fingertips, you can immediately go to a specific business, and start engaging. And let's just, since we're here, we'll create a teaser for you. So just click on teaser. Because we clicked on the name only, we have to tell the program, well, what type of business is it? And by the way, here's all the business categories we asked in the Pulse survey. And they're organized by a general heading, like apparel businesses, automotive businesses, beauty and spa businesses, okay? education. Sometimes it's a little overwhelming. How do I, you know, what category is the best fit for this business? How do I find it? So like I'm doing right here, you just type in the search what you want to find. And I want to find insurance. So I type in insurance. Okay. And there I get change or get a new insurance agency. So I click on insurance agent. And here's my teaser. Before I go into the details of it, we've set out your program for your print and web and for your penny saver. By the way, as we're moving through and you guys are starting to use the program, if you'd like any other options, if you sell different zones or different packages or you have any unique publications that you're doing, we can add it to the drop down list here for you. Okay? Or if there's something that you want to present on a custom basis, you just give it a name and type in a number of households you reach. And everything that Pulse does, by the way, is based on households. And the reason for that is we ask the question, do you or somebody in your household plan to buy? So we don't base it on readers or uniques, we base it on households reach, and it's net households. So if they go to your website and also read your publication, they're only counted once, okay? And hey, so Tom, now, can I interrupt you for a second? Yes, please. So I, I know this agency, Lisa Catone, and I'm, uh, I think Berta, that's in your territory, so interrupt me if I'm saying the wrong thing here, but I would think that you know, she's primarily targeting Livingston County for her customers. So that would be two of our additions instead of 132,000, it would probably be closer to 20,000 or so. What would, what would Berta do if she wanted to alter the number in there um, instead of the 7,738? 
I think that's an important point because if you give them too big of a geographic footprint, the number is too big and it, it doesn't connect. And so what we can do permanently is you said you've got different zones, regions. Let's, let's do a drop down list here for you. If you could send that to me you know, or to Taylor, we'll get it up for you. But right now, for Berta, what are the, what are the, you know, the two zones? Um, it would probably be our Livingston and Dansville area. Okay, so Livingston and Dansville, right? Yeah, which would be Livingston County. Okay, and what's the, how many households do you have? About 20. Okay, so 20,000, 20, okay. I would think. So, so you can do like I just did and click update, or better yet, to make it simpler, faster for you, let's add your different packages to the to a drop down list. How's that sound? That sounds that sounds good. I still I still think that custom feature will be good because you know, there's a lot of businesses that might need two of those or three of those. So if they could, if they know how to just punch it in, and that's all you have to do. Okay. How would that look if you updated it? Yeah, you just click here. And now it's projected based on 20,000 households. Okay, so going down here, you've got right here, of the 20,000 households we reach each week in Livingston and Dansville, 5.3% plan to change or get a new insurance agency over the next three months. So 5.3 times 20,000 is 1,060 households you reach in, in Livingston County who plan to change or get a new insurance agency in the next three months, okay? That's great. Okay, and then you would say you're on the phone with them. Remember, you wanna engage, get an appointment, et cetera. Then you would say, would you like to know more about their plans? We've got information on auto insurance, homeowners insurance, even pet insurance. And the beauty of it is when you ask them, would you like to know more? Very, very seldom do they say no, they don't wanna know about their business, okay? And so we've got it set up here, what to say. So the words are here, and you can paraphrase them obviously, but the essence of it is, we asked the questions you would ask. You know, so we asked about changing or getting new insurance agency. We found out there's over 1,060 households we reach, okay? You know, in the Livingston County area, we plan to change or get new insurance. Would you like to know more? And notice it says shopping plans. It might sound a little ridiculous for insurance. Remember, this is, this is a website. Pulse is essentially a website. So we have to use the most generic terms possible. Okay. So would you like to know more about their insurance needs or insurance plans? And so many times they're going to say yes. And now you've started the conversation. It's easy to get an appointment. If you can't talk to them on the phone, you can always email them. And so you click here on email, you click you click on copy and text, okay? Simple as that. And then if you'd like to see the flyer, look at this, you just click on flyer. And there you go, you've got your flyer, just automatically created for you, okay? Once again, we've gotta come here, and we've gotta change it. So we just click on custom audience, and I put in Livingston. Put it in Livingston County this time. And there you go. But look at this, there's, you've got almost 1,400 households who plan to change or get new insurance, homeowners insurance. You've got almost 1,700 households who in the next three months, that's, that's, the, that's the, 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 the motive, next three months plan to get or change auto insurance, okay? So, Bertie, do you think Lisa would be interested in this information? It's very helpful information, yes. Yeah, it's something. Definitely. Yeah, she doesn't know right now. And like other businesses, there's a lot of uncertainty. You've got facts. You've got a crystal ball for her about what's going to be happening, what the opportunities are for her business, her business over the next three months. That's it. This is from the survey that we did, or does it tell you how many people have taken the survey? Yeah, it's on a this form. No, not on this form. What we use is the percentage. Okay. 
So I'm sure people ask where'd you get these numbers from and yeah, we asked. Tell them you ran ads in your paper, links on your website, you invited your audience to take the survey. Mm -hmm. Okay, and good question. And we found out, for instance, that 6.8% of the people who filled out the survey said, yes, we plan to get new homeowners insurance. So 6.8 times 20,000 is 1,360. The program does all the math for you. Yeah, but what if they want like a specific number of people who took the survey? We don't have that. 400. Answer? 400. Okay. 400 took the survey. It's about an hour long right. survey. Okay. I do remember that now. Okay. So 400 took the survey. And once you hit 400, by the way, the results don't change. At 500, it might be 6.7%. At 700, it might be 6.9%. So once you pass 400, for any given statistic, in other words, percentage you plan to buy, it just goes up a little bit or down a little bit, okay? So that's why you don't need to do more than 400. That's why we stopped the survey, okay? So any other questions, Berta? So you don't want anybody more than 400 to take the survey out of our whole 132,000 circulation? Yeah, because it wouldn't have made any difference in the end result. Okay. Okay. So let me just once again repeat. Let's say we did a thousand surveys. I've been doing this for 35 years, and I can assure you that this percentage right here, which is from your survey, and it's based on the 400 completed surveys, if we would get the survey going and we did a thousand, this number right here, instead of being 6.7, 6.8%, might be 6.7 or 6.9. It changes just a little bit. Make sense? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so very good question. So just, just as a reinforcing reminder of everybody, we asked, we invited your audience with ads in the paper, links on your website, email invitation. I think it was a coupon club you have, right? Steve Manuel? Yeah, coupon club. We invited them to take the survey. We didn't need to do more than 400. Okay? All right, so that's the flyer program. And by the way, since we're here, you'll notice up at the top, there's an address here I'm highlighting. Person says, person, you call them on the phone and you say to them, you know, we just participated. We asked insurance questions. We found out that there's 1,060 households, Lisa, that we reach in the Livingston County area who plan to change or get a new insurance agency. Would you like to know more about their insurance plans over the next three months for health insurance, homeowners insurance, auto insurance? She's going to say yes. Then say, let me send it over to you. Are you by your computer? Yes. And you just copy the address here. And just copy this and email it to them. That address, when they click on it, will bring them right to this flyer. Okay? And now you could be on, you know, a, a Microsoft Teams meeting with them. And they will have it on their screen or better yet you can show them your screen. Because look at this, once, and this is, I'm just, I'm jumping ahead just a bit, but that's okay. You are the consultant, you've got information they don't have. So you click here on the editing pen and up comes the survey data. And so the insurance person might say, well, I'd like to know about business insurance. So business and commercial insurance, business health insurance, okay? Key man insurance. The beauty of this is you've got access to all of the information and it's right at your fingertips. You just scroll down right here. Maybe the person wants to know about dental insurance, okay? Maybe they wanna know about pet insurance. And so as you're clicking here, remember on Microsoft Teams, they can see this, they can see your screen. You can be that consultant just like you're there with them. But better yet, you guys have never ever had to, you know, best of my recollection, information 
like this for the businesses. What's in it for the business? What's their benefit? And after you've done that, you just come down here, you click on update. And look at this, it updates their presentation, their information. What's the benefit to you? Well, they, the business is gonna be much more interested in con continuing their advertising, i.e. retention, or coming back and starting advertising with you again, or starting a whole new campaign, because they see the benefit. And then, by the way, they know what to advertise, because now they see, I made a big sale once, in a four-legged sales call to an insurance agent because I brought up this business insurance. See this business insurance? That's 4.2%. Doesn't sound like a big percentage, does it? But 4.2% of 20,000 households is 840 businesses that plan to change or get new business insurance. And that insurance agent said, wow, I hadn't even thought of advertising business insurance. And she said, nobody else is. They're all advertising auto insurance. So I'm going to advertise business insurance. She called me back a couple months later and said, thank you. See, this information is a catalyst. And like Steve said, originally, you know, you, your um, ad wizard is great. This is like the bait. This is the, the information that gets them excited, gets them interested. And so this is the flyer program. And so let me click off here if I might, and we'll go back to your home page. And so now let me go to the business guide. So right here on your home page is the COVID business guide. And these are the businesses that have increased in shopping because of COVID. So I put together my top 25 personal recommended list for you. So you've got businesses such as a wine shop. Look at that, a 52%. 52% increase over January. So in the survey, it's 22%. You've got other, like remodeling contractor, up 33%. So these are business categories that have an increase. I always put some in that ha also have a decrease. Like, look at this. Insurance agency is actually down around 60%. But in the example we just saw with Lisa and the flyer we just created, wasn't it still a huge opportunity for her? Even though it is down because of COVID, it's still a big number. And so that's why I included that in mine. And then right below that is the Pulse total list. And so we've broken it out for you by categories, service categories, grocery, home, you know, contractors, automotive, etc. And the ones that are bolded are the ones that have an increase in shopping. So you've got my top 25 list, and there's a little video at the top, and then you've got the ones, the complete list that Pulse has put together for you. Okay? So let's go down here and show you how to use this. So we wanna find some prospects. So let's go to Remodeling Contractor. So we click on Remodeling Contractor and it defaults to your primary zip code, but no problem if you wanna localize it, you just type in another zip code here or put in a county or you can put in a city. So you can change, this is a Google map. So you just change the search parameters, okay? And then let's put together a prospect list. So we're doing a remodeling contract. We're gonna add them to our prospect list. So we click add to call planner, add to call planner, add to call planner, okay? Or you could click on the map and you could add to your call plan. You could create a teaser flyer like I've just shown you. But let's go up to the call plan and show you that. So I've added some businesses to my prospect list, my call plan, okay? Now I click up here on call plan and it has the businesses I just added, okay? Now, what do you do with your call plan? Well, you can use it as a prospecting tool and keep track of where you're at. And so let's just click here, add activity. And so what did you do? I made a phone call. It was a cold call. I presented a print and digital package, okay? What's my next step? Get the contract. When? And we put together a 
let's say we're gonna do it on Friday, the next step is on Friday, and you can select the appropriate calendar and add it to your calendar. You can even put in some notes and then click it and it adds it to your calendar and it updates your prospecting list on where you're at. You can also put in the sales status by clicking sales status. The other great thing about this is it's really fast when you're filling the pipeline or you're working your plan because you can just click like here and you can just view teaser. So you create a list and boom, you got your teaser, you come down here, you put in the zone and right at your fingertips, you've got the words to say, simple as that. You saw me, I clicked on zero, so let me fix that, okay? And then let's go back. And let's go back to the call plan where we were at a second ago. And you wanna do a tease or flyer? You just click flyer. Look at how fast that is. And what's startling about this is, is these are very, very, very appropriate businesses to target like a modeling contractor because look at this you've got almost 1200 households who are going to finish off their their basement or remodel you know remodel or finish off their basement living area but look at add a room 730 remodel a bathroom almost 10,000 now that's on your total circulation but once again you can change it by just typing here and let's do it for Livingston County again So in Livingston County, look at that, you've got over, well not over, you've got 1,300 households who plan to remodel their bath. That's, that is exceptionally positive news. So you've got the big number when you call on the phone, the teaser, and you've got the information that they're gonna be very, very interested. And once again, you can edit it right here. Simple as that. So any questions so far? Yeah, on you, te teaser uh, flyer. You might have, uh, if you can go back to that previous screen, um, and I might have missed it, but what happens when you hit select? Oh, okay. Just a second here. Let me go back to it. I'll go to the flyer once again. Okay, on the flyer. There you are. So we're selecting. All it does is when you print it, it's highlighted. So it's saying to the business, where do you think the opportunity is? Where can you get more business? And he says, remodeling bathroom or remodeling the kitchen. It's just a reminder that this is their target market. This is what they advertise, okay? Um, I have a quick question. Sure. Um, it says that 960 people out of the 20,000 is planning on doing some sort of remodeling contractor. Mm -hmm. So how do we get that 1,300 households that are going to remodel their bathroom that's higher than the 960? Yeah, because some people are going to do it themselves. It's just, it, it, it's the 4.8% plan to ha hire a professional remodeling contractor. But the reason the remodeling the bathroom is higher at 6.5% is, like I just said a moment ago, some people plan to do it themselves or they plan to get their brother-in-law to do it for them with them, okay? Another example to answer your question, and it's a great question is, plan to buy a used car. Plan to buy a used car is, is usually around 15%, but plan to shop at a used car dealership is less, it's usually around 11%. The reason is, is that you can buy a used car, not just from a used car dealership, but you can also buy a used car from a new car dealership, right? You can buy a used car from a private party. So the opportunity for used cars is always higher than buying from a used car dealership because you got multiple choices. Just like here in Remodel the Bathroom, the percentage is higher and obviously the number is higher because they can have their bath remodeled, not just by a remodeling contractor, but they can do it themselves or they can get a, you know, a friend or a relative to help them with it. Make sense? Does that make sense? 
Yes, yes, it does. Well, great question. I appreciate that. Okay, but then again, for the remodeling contractor, there's 1,300 who plan to remodel their bath, but only 960 of them plan to use the remodeling contract. Is there more opportunity for a remodeling contractor for bathroom than they're probably going to get? Yes. That's the way. I've been out in the field, you know, a couple times like this where the guy says, well, I should be advertising remodeling bath even stronger because there's more opportunity that I'm probably going to get because he realized that people could do it themselves and going to run into trouble and realize they should have called a professional or have, you know, a relative to it. So great question. Okay, so let's show you some other things in your program here for you. Okay, now let's go down here to the break-even calculator. Okay, so in the break-even calculator, you come down right here. But let me show you this first. In your presentation, you have the one-page presentation. Now the one-page presentation, you're presenting a campaign. So it's like the teaser, the flyer, but you added a specific campaign proposal. So let's do that. So you can either click right here, or I'm gonna show you another prospecting tool we have. It's the hot prospects. And so you click here on hot prospects, there's four prospecting tools. You click here on hot prospects, and you've got the business categories, but this time it shows you the close ratio, the average sale, and its sold rank. Now, where's that come from? As I said before, Paul says over 600 you know, publications used in our program, about 6,000 ad reps. Every time they create a presentation and then put in what happened into the reporting program, which I'll show you in a second here, it records it. And so we know what the close ratio is, the average sale, and how many have been sold for each business category. So like for hearing aid, the close ratio is 52.5%. The average sale is 3,800. And among all the businesses, it ranks 16th in most sold. What's cool about this is you can organize this list by sold rank. So the number one most sold business category is realtor. Number two is new vehicle. Now this, was, this goes back and it's an ongoing tracking. It goes back now for two years but it's constantly being updated. So it doesn't take into account the last two months alone, standalone, you know, just the COVID period. That's why restaurants show up higher than they normally would. But what's cool about this is you can select business categories based upon close ratio. You can click here on find and also identify prospects and put them in your call plan. You can also, now we go back to the dashboard here, we've got a map. You can find prospects by map. So you just type in your zip code. I'm gonna type in Livingston County, see what happens. Didn't populate. Sometimes it's not a perfect world. Let's go back to the dashboard here. And this time I want to show you the, how do you create a presentation? So you click here on presentation. And we're going to choose a business. You're probably going to want to create a new, new account. So let's just put in test business. You click on create. Okay, you got to put in what type of business it is. And let's just say this is a financial advisor. Okay, it's financial advisor. It's, you know, so I did a search. Select your audience. I'm going to put in Livingston again. Twenty thousand. Okay, you put in the ad package. What do you want to present? Berta, help me out here. Give me an average campaign cost. Oh, God. <laughs> and be bold. Be bold? Yeah, be bold. 
Um, I don't know. Half a page for six weeks and see what that gets us. What? Like a half a page for six weeks, you think? In just Livingston? Yeah. Why not? Okay, so how much? 328 times six. six. <laughs> so about 328. 2000? Yeah. Okay, so 2000, you said six weeks? Okay. Okay, I'm going to be even bolder. Okay. I'm going to put in 12,000 for 52 weeks. I was an ad reps once. I don't like reselling them all the time. Okay. I like selling them once and then helping them with a consistent, you know, ongoing program. Okay. Can so I just ask a quick question? Where's the customer value number come from? Okay. It is estimated by Pulse to give you a starting point in the conversation with the business. Because every category of business change, well, it, there's no real average. Some furniture, well, it's hard to get an average for a furniture store, for instance, financial advisor, because every business has a different target. Some furniture stores are high end, some furniture stores are low end. So the, it's the estimate based upon feedback from clients, research that Pulse has done to identify a realistic but conservative estimated annual expenditure by a household for that business category. And it's meant to be a starting point of the conversation. So when you get to the break even calculator, you can ask them. Paul says that the average is 2175. What is your average household spend over a year's time? So that's an annual. Now, I know you have the campaign length for a year. Is it based on that? If you put the campaign length for six months, would that number change to a six-month average, or would it always be an annual? It's always an annual because... Always annual, okay. Because the business feels like, you know, if you get a new restaurant customer, they're going to come back month after month. That's their goal. Would you agree with that? Yes. Okay, so that's why we use annual. Okay. Okay? And so... We estimate for each business category what a realistic but conservative household value is. We put a pure placeholder 50% gross profit. Every business has their own unique gross profit target in their financial plan, business plan. We only put in 50% as a estimate, okay? Well, as a placeholder. Then the next step is, See, the flyer creates everything for you automatically. In the one page, you can create your own custom presentation, but it's got some artificial intelligence built into it. It, for every business category you select, it gives you the products or services for that business category that other ad reps, when they've created a presentation for that business category, have selected, okay? And so, Change your new management of their investments. Change your new manager for retirement. Um, business consulting. Um, money market funds, mutual funds. You can also search the whole database if you want. So you, now you're selecting, like you saw on the flyer, the products and services. You click finish, okay? And then you can now select competitive Social media, for instance. So many times they'll say, well, I don't need to advertise with you. I've got my own business Facebook page, right? Or I have my own email or my own website. And so now you can show them because of fragmentation, i.e. not everybody goes to a business Facebook page. You can show them what they're missing. So we found out from your survey that 7.5% of all the households you read said yes. In the last 30 days, they responded to a offer on a business Facebook page. Actually responded to an offer, okay? And this is pretty powerful because I think you'll agree with me, so many businesses think, well, I don't need to advertise. I've, you know, I put my stuff up on Facebook, right? Which you show them what they're missing. Then if they say, well, I've got my own website, 24% of your households have been to any business website, okay? We've also got automotive sites. We've got real estate sites. 
we've got employment sites, and in today's world, there's extreme fragmentation. Because there's so many automotive sites, it's very fragmented. And these are the percentages who would not use, okay? And real estate, for instance, Zillow is a very powerful real estate website. But look at 31% of your audience said yes, they would go to Zillow, which means that 69% of your audience would not go to Zillow. Okay? A question, real fast. Um, why do you guys present the percentages that way, if you don't mind me asking? Like sure. the numbers? And I appreciate the question. Let me just click on finish here and let me show you the actual presentation. Well, let me go back to it. I'm going to click on Zillow. Let me do that if I might. So come here, add more. Must have an internet connection. Something's going wrong. Strange. I lost my internet. Oh, that's working. And by the way, we're going to turn on your Ad Wizard program for you right here. But I want to get back to the competitive media here. So I'm going to save the presentation, then I'm going to edit the presentation. So I'm going to come back here. So to edit, I need to go to the front page. Sorry for wandering around here a bit. Every time you create a presentation, right on your home page, it lists it for you. Okay. And so I'm going to come over here in the navigation and I can edit the presentation. Okay. And also, since we're here in the reporting program to report, are you using the program, what you're using? You can then mark a presentation as you presented it, or they said yes, or they said no, or you can delete the presentation. But let's go to the editing function. So we'll click here on edit, okay? We come down here and we're gonna click on media again. There we go. Click on, we're gonna come down here to real estate to answer your question about Zillow and put in Red Flynn also. Click on finish and click on update. I don't know why, somehow I got locked out of the program. And now we've updated. So in answer to your question, why do we put the percent who have not used? To show them what they're missing. So a little role play. So if I go to a realtor and they say, well, I don't need to advertise with you. I'm buying this premium package on Zillow. And as you know, Zillow reaches everybody. Well, in actuality, would you agree with me, Miss Realtor? There are many, many real estate websites. You got the MLS site, you got all of the corporate sites from Century 21, you know, Caldwell Banker, et cetera. Plus, you've got Redfin, et cetera. Yeah, there are a lot of sites. Well, Zillow is the strongest. Zillow is used by 31% of our audience, number one. But if 31% of our audience go to Zillow, that means that 69% of our audience have not gone to Zillow or a local home search. And by the way, we asked which real estate websites, if you were to buy a home, would you go to? And so why do we do it? To show them that you're missing 69% of our audience if you don't also use us in addition to Zillow. Well, I'm on Facebook. I put all my you know, specials on Facebook. Well, the reality is only 8% of our audience responded to a business Facebook offer. Remember, how people go to personal Facebook pages, less of them go to business Facebook pages, and only 8% of your audience actually responded to an offer that a business put on their business Facebook page. So if 8% did, 92% did not. Okay, so in this example here with this financial advisor, you've got 
and this is this is in your twenty thousand from Livingston. You've got two thousand households that you guys reach who plan to change or get a new financial advisor. That's that's significant. But if they only put their offer, you know, the solicitation on their business Facebook page, they would miss 92% of that. Why? Because 92% of your audience, 92% of 2,000 is over 1,800 households that you reach who plan to change a financial advisor who if they only use Facebook and not you also, they would miss. Now, does that make sense why we do it that way? Yes. Fear of missing out. Fear of missing out is one of the biggest motivators of people, in particular business managers. They want to reach everybody who's a potential customer. So you're showing them here, there's 2,000. What we're giving you is the ability to overcome objections. Well, I'm on Zillow. I don't need you. You know, I've got my own automotive website. I don't need you. Okay? So we're able to show them what they're missing. And that's one of the benefits of this one page presentation is you have the option of putting into the presentation specific competitors. In this case, they're global competitors like Facebook, you know, like email, like direct mail, et cetera, on what they're missing. Okay. May I ask one more question? I'm sorry. As long as we're right I, here. I love questions. I love questions. Okay. Um, where it says we can reach the households you're missing, the part we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, under the local business website, it says not used hyphen past 30 days. Mm -hmm. And then the Facebook says not used offer past 30 days. Mm -hmm. I mean that they don't use the offer typically past a 30 day window or is that meaning that in the past 30 days they haven't used those at all? Yeah in, the, yeah, in the last 30 days, we asked in the survey, which of the following have you done in the last 30 days? So 8% said in the last 30 days, we responded to any business Facebook offer. Okay. But we have, you have to add the 30 days in there as like a disclaimer type of thing? No, it's, it's the time period we asked, so it's short term. Okay. So say it's the same statement it just has that hyphen in there basically yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, no, okay. yeah. we're trying to shorten it you know we're trying to get everything to fit on one page <laughs> that's why <laughs> gotcha that's why we're hyphenating okay but thanks so much for the question now here's the here's the thing that in the one page presentation remember we're presenting a twelve thousand dollar campaign and all they need is one customer per month Okay, so it's a 52 week campaign. Remember when I typed it in $12,000? And we estimated their customer value 2,175. We estimated a 50% gross profit, right? Okay, and so now 50% of 2,175 is 1,088. Divide 1,088 into 12,000. All they need is 11 customers. That's about one a month. Okay, a little less than one a month. That's out of 2,000 you reach in Livingston County who are going to get a new or change financial advisors. They just need, in the course of a whole year, 11 or one a month. Now, here's where you get the business engaged. This is our estimate. We're using a placeholder 2,175 and 50% gross profit. So let's get them engaged. So let's say you've set up a Microsoft you know, meeting with them or Zillow, they're watching your screen, you click here, up it comes. Let's do this together. If you got a new household at your financial advisor firm, what would that household be worth to you, okay? And let's just say $12,000, okay? What's important is what do they say? It's their business. What is your cost of goods? Well, because in the financial industry, their cost of goods is pretty high, you know, because they're buy, buying these policies. So let's say it's 85%, okay? So 85%. But that's still a net customer value of 1,800. 1,800 and 12,000, they only need seven customers. And so right 
with them for them in this break-even calculator. And once again, this is probably one of the more important things that we have for you in today's world is with them figuring out how few customers they need. Now we also build in for a cynical business as I don't think seven, you know, I'll get seven. What do you think is the worst case? Absolute worst case. Okay. And they say, I think four. I think I'll get four customers over 12, 12 months. Okay, you just type in four here, and that's a $7,200 campaign. How did I get that? Four customers, what they said is their absolute worst case, lowest number of customers they'd get, times their customer value of $1,800, okay, is $7,200. So they just agreed to a $7,200 campaign because they said four is their minimal worst case number of new customers they'd get very, very effective out in the field in helping a business quickly understand that yes, they can advertise. And I think, and I think you'll agree with me now more than ever, because of the financial uncertainty, that little break even calculator, which is on the one page, okay? Or, oops, I clicked on the wrong dot. Down here, click on the editing pen, or on your front page. And by the way, since I'm here on the um, you can print, you can click here, and you can email the one-page presentation. You just click on the email icon, type in the email address. You can create your own verbiage here. Here's the link once again that they click on, you know, to access the presentation. Now, the last thing to show you is the reporting program. So I showed you down here, every presentation you create, it automatically logs it for you. And then, and what's cool about this is, is you can use your call planner to access your teaser flyers, or you can just come down to the bottom of your page and then just click here, like on flyer. And it's right there for you. So you can start out the day by creating quite a few, and then just on your home page, just go click, 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 click and you pick up the phone and you're engaging with a business. You can do the same thing obviously from your call planner. Put them on your call plan and then just click on teaser flyer. And then the last thing to show you is the reporting. Every time you create a presentation, it automatically logs it for you, okay? Then you, all you have to do is just once again, click on the, on the navigation dots and put in what happened, okay? Now with a teaser, which is the, talk, the talking points here, the words, you mark it as engage. I use the teaser, I engage with the teaser. So you just click on engage. When did you do it? I did it today. And you get pulse points. So we build in a contest or points into the program. So once again, you come down here, this little icon is for the flyer. It's kind of like a door opener. This is the words to say, the teaser. And then the one page presentation has a one page sheet. It looks a little different here. And you just click right here. And you can mark it in the flyer as engaged. So it's simple as that. Hey, John, I've got a quick question if I could. Sure. How long do you estimate? we should budget for doing those training courses before we get going? Usually people do it over a one to two week period. You know, so there it's just time to assimilate it. So you do one or two a day. So that's the feedback from our clients, one to two weeks. Okay. Okay. I would suggest you start out right away, logging in and creating some teasers. That's a good starting point, just to start getting a feel for the program. And then obviously just start the training. Sound good? Sounds good. I, okay. I, don't, I can't speak for everybody, but I don't think I personally received the login. So I was gonna email um, your support service, support at Pulse Research myself, so. Yeah, support at pulseresearch.com. Okay. Okay. I didn't get one either. Hmm.
I thought it went out on Friday, but let me double check. If not, it might have gone to your spam, but if not, here's what I'll do. I'll send an email right after our get together, you know, to Taylor, who's the person, and make sure if not, it'll come out momentarily for you. Great, thank you. Okay. So is there any questions you have? I mean, I'm more than happy to, you know, got a lot of time this afternoon. I know it's later your time. My gosh, it's 519 your time, sorry. <laughs> it's only 219 here in Oregon. I, th I think it'll be a matter of us getting in there and trying it all. It's a great high level demonstration you've provided and I'm, I'm really excited about the tool. So I hope our team is liking all the options as well. Well, thank you. There's a lot there. There's a lot there. It can be overwhelming and that's why we put together the training, but just take the first steps. And I recommended a moment ago, the teaser. And I think this is probably the most important thing is I would call some of your existing businesses, have the teaser up on your screen and just share the opportunity with them. You're gonna be very, very pleasantly surprised how extremely meaningful and positive. I've done over two and a half thousand four-legged sales calls. You know, I go out in the field and do training. All but twice, the businesses said, thank you. Thank you so much for caring about us and sharing this information for our business. Let me give you my email. I'm more than happy to help anytime. It's Marling, M-A-R-L-I-N-G, Marling at paper.net. Okay. So anybody, any other questions or anything you can think of right now? Today's the start. Uh, the Metro. Yeah, I'll get the Metro up right away for you, too. That was my mistake. That's okay. Um, and you said that's not quite ready yet? No, what, what we'll have to do is each of you in Pulse you have your own user ID. We send your user ID to the folks at Metro who then assign your Ad Wizard account. It's, it's a, it'll take a day, but I'll get it done right away for you, okay? So my apologies on that. There's about eight different ways you can access in your Pulse program the Ad Wizard tool. Obviously, John, uh, we're working from home. Mm -hmm. Our entire courses, and to be honest with you, I see that happening a little bit longer. Depends on how soon our places are able to get back to work. Mm -hmm. um, I do see a, a benefit here, though, certainly of being able to impart some knowledge uh, to our customers remotely. And um, I'm going to put words in your mouth, but it is fairly easy to email this information, correct? Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah in fact, going here to the call planner. And you just click right here on teaser and you click on what to email. There it is right there. You just cut and paste. Right. Okay. And we'll be able to also include the Metro spec ad in that email once it's uh, set up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, I want to thank you so much on behalf of the Pulse team to join your team and we'll do whatever we can to assist and support you. Thank you again, John. Really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you. You as well. Thank you. Thank you.